Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. My name is James and here at 20th and 21st Movies, we are about all things cinema. I'm really excited today to continue my reviews of the recent films that I picked up as part of the February Criterion Collection Flash Sale Hall pickups. I picked up four titles as part of the February Criterion Flash Sale and I put a video out a little while ago about that. So if you haven't had a chance to check out that video, check out my Criterion Collection Flash Sale Hall video that I recently put out. In this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on a film that came out in 1974 from director Alan J. Pakula and it's called The Parallax View starring Warren Beatty. So some of you may know that Alan J. Pakula put out a series of films in the early to mid 1970s that are part of his Paranoia trilogy. So The Parallax View is right in the middle of that trilogy. The first film that came out in that trilogy is a film from 1971 starring Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland called Clute. And that film actually has an addition from Criterion that is excellent, that came out a few years ago that I highly recommend picking up if you haven't checked out Clute. This is a very nice film starring Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland. This is the first film in this trilogy. And the second film in the trilogy that we're gonna do as part of this review today is Warren Beatty in The Parallax View. This is from 1974 from Alan J. Pakula. And then the third film in this trilogy is a film starring Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman playing the reporters who broke the Watergate scandal back in the early 1970s during the Nixon administration. And it's called all the President's Men. This came out in 1976, and this is the third chapter of Alan J. Pakula's Paranoia Trilogy. So this is an excellent film, of course, as well. And these three films make up his Paranoia Trilogy. In today's review, we're gonna be covering The Parallax View, which is a film starring Warren Beatty. This is a really interesting film. This film is a classic example of a film that is very much about its time, okay? This film came out in 1974, about a decade or so removed from the Kennedy assassination in 1963, and also the 1968 assassinations of Robert F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. So during that period of time in American history, and probably to some extent still today, there was a pervading sense of paranoia or conspiracy theories abounded during that time, particularly around the assassinations of those men, especially JFK, the circumstances surrounding that, which there are still questions about that even to this day about what really happened and whether or not Lee Harvey Oswald truly was the lone gunman in that situation. So the Parallax View, which came out in 1974, plays right in the space of the stream of American consciousness at that time around paranoia and conspiracy theories and not trusting the government and shadowy organizations. This movie plays right in that space and it stars Warren Beatty and it is an excellent, excellent film. So I'll read this description here on the back. Perhaps no director tapped into the sense of dread and mistrust that pervaded the 1970s more effectively than Alan J. Pakula, who in the second installment of his celebrated Paranoia trilogy, offers a chilling vision of America in the wake of the assassinations of the Kennedys and Martin Luther King Jr. with the shock of Watergate near at hand. Three years after the murder of a leading senator atop Seattle Space Needle, reporter Joseph Frady, Warren Beatty, begins digging into the mysterious circumstances surrounding the killing and stumbles into a labyrinthian conspiracy far more sinister than he could have imagined. The Parallax views coolly stylized, shadow-etched compositions by acclaimed cinematographer Gordon Willis gives visual expression to a mood that begins as an anxious whisper and ends as a scream into the void. So this description from Criterion, as always, does a great job of encapsulating the experience of watching this film. It definitely plays into that paranoia and dread of the 1970s. And I think Warren Beatty is excellent in his role in this film as Joseph Frady. I would say though, that as you look at his role in this film, it's very different than the roles he's played in other films. I really love Warren Beatty as John McCabe and McCabe and Mrs. Miller. I love them as George and Shampoo. And of course he was unforgettable as Clyde Barrow in the classic Bonnie and Clyde that he starred in with Faye Dunaway. 
So those were all very different characters than the character he plays here in the Parallax View. In the Parallax View, he's playing Joseph Frady, who's a newspaper reporter who's investigating the circumstances of this assassination and the people who witnessed it now suddenly being knocked off as a result of it. So it's really interesting that this is a more understated performance from Warren Beatty. I mean, he does emote somewhat, but it's, it's sort of below the surface. It's not as expressive as I've seen him play in some other roles, but this is still a very effective performance from Mr. Beatty and I really enjoyed it. This film is an example of a film that is driven more by the plot and the intrigue and the mystery that's within it. You're trying to unravel the mystery, the conspiracy. You're trying to understand this shadowy organization called the Parallax Corporation. Those elements and just a sense of paranoia and dread of the time really drive this film more so than the characters. So Warren Beatty did a fine job as Joseph Frady. I wouldn't consider his role in this movie one of his best roles. I like Beatty a lot more in those other films I just mentioned, but he's perfectly fine in this role. They could have put in several other actors to play this particular role because this movie is more driven by the plot, driven by the, the intrigue, the mystery, the conspiracy that you're trying to unravel what's going on, more so than the characters themselves. But nevertheless, I think Beatty did perfectly fine job in the role as Joseph Frady, and I think he fit perfectly within this movie. So Warren Beatty is the star that's driving this film along with the plot, but there's also some other key actors who play some really strong supporting roles throughout the plot of this film that I think give this film a little bit more depth. Paula Prentice plays a key character in this role. She's sort of a love interest for Joseph Frady in this picture, uh, Lee Carter. You have William Daniels, who played a really key role as Austin Tucker in this film. You have Walter McGinn, who is Jack Younger, who works for this Parallax Corporation, this shadowy corporation. He played a really key role in this film. And several other characters, I think, played some really nice roles in this, in this particular film. You have Kelly Thordson, who played, I think, a really nice part as the Sheriff L.D. Wicker in this film. I think he had a really interesting role in this movie. A big part of watching this film is just not really knowing what's going on until you get closer to the end and you begin to figure out what's about to happen. This is the kind of film that, that I think most people who watch it are going to sort of figure out where things are going to go because the film sets up in the beginning kind of where it's going to end up at the end. And as you follow Joseph Frady's character as he's investigating the goings on of this Parallax Corporation and the conspiracy surrounding the senator's death and the killings that happen after that, the further you get in this movie, it doesn't take a genius to sort of figure out where things are going to lead in this film. So without spoiling the plot, this film comes full circle from the beginning to the end and the journey of Joseph Frady's character through it you sort of figure out what's gonna happen to him as you get closer to the end, but it all ties up really nicely and it plays right into the whole paranoia and the conspiracy theory crazed 1970s that America was in. This film is also an example of why I love seeing films from the 1970s because you get to see you know, elements of what life was like just a few decades ago. You know, Just one little part of this movie that I really liked was I saw a scene of some characters playing the video game Pong, which was one of the early video games. And you see them playing Pong. And this movie came out right around the time that Pong was first introduced. And it's one of the early video games. And I thought that was sort of a neat little touch and element that was included in this film. So I really appreciate that part. So let me know in the comments below if you've ever played that video game Pong. It's the one of the very first, if not the first video game that's ever come out. And of course, games have come a long way since then. But let me know in the comments below if you have ever played Pong. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the video and audio presentation of this Criterion Collection edition. Overall, this is a really nice presentation from Criterion. This is a 4K digital restoration from the original camera negative of this film. And this film looks really, really nice on Blu-ray. This film does have a fair amount of grain in it, but it's realized just fine. The detail is really nice in this film. You can see a lot, even in the shadows. I just think overall, there's a really nice organic quality to the presentation of this film. So the 4K digital restoration, from the original camera negative, you're gonna get the best possible picture you can if you're working with 
the original camera negative, if that original camera negative is of good quality and is usable. And this is an example of a film from the 1970s, early 1970s, that I think was restored pretty well. This is a very nice presentation from a video standpoint. From an audio standpoint on here, you get an uncompressed monaural soundtrack, and I thought the audio did a perfectly fine job. It's not a 5.1 or 7.1 mix, it's not anything that advanced, but it does the job, and I could hear the dialogue really well, I could hear the sounds and the soundscape very well, so I have no complaints from an audio standpoint. So overall, I think from a video and audio presentation, the Parallax View from Criterion is a nice 4K digital restoration. The picture looks really, really good on this disc and the sound quality from an audio standpoint sounds very nice. So overall, the Parallax View has a very solid video and audio presentation. I think Criterion did a really good job with this one. Okay, on to the supplements on this disc. Overall, the supplementary package of the Parallax View from the Criterion Collection is really good, very solid. There's a nice set of supplemental features on here. This is not what I would consider to be a, a particularly stacked edition, but the features on here are all very good. You've got a couple of interviews from Pacula from 1974 and 1995. The 74 interview is a little bit longer, and I think you get a little bit more than you do on the 1995 interview, but I think both interviews complement each other very well because you get the perspective from the filmmaker from the time the film came out, and then sort of a retrospective 20 years later in 1995. So I thought that was really, really good. In the 1974 interview, Pacula talks about the difference between melodramas and character studies, about how melodramas have, a, have an inevitable, relentless rhythm to them, and character studies are a little bit more leisurely in the way that you approach those types of films. So I thought that was interesting how he sort of laid out the difference between melodramas or, and character studies. And frankly, I didn't even think much about that dynamic of filmmaking. That's why I really think it's awesome to hear directors' interviews. You really get to understand their thought process in how they work with characters, how they work with material. You get aspects of the process of filmmaking that you wouldn't normally even think about, right? So I find that really interesting, and I thought that was very fascinating about Pacula's interviews from 74 and 1995. Also, you have on here a new program on cinematographer Gordon Willis featuring an interview from him from 2004. This is an excellent inclusion as well because Gordon Willis was a cinematographer on this film. The cinematography of this movie is excellent and it is definitely part of the reason why you should consider picking this one up. The way that they set these shots really plays into the mood that they're going for in this film and I think Gordon Willis did a tremendous job as a cinematographer on this movie. You also have a new interview with John Borston, assistant to Pacula on the Parallax View. I believe that he was an intern at the time and he got to do some really interesting work uh, on, this, on this particular film and it got him into the business of filmmaking. You've got an essay by critic Nathan Heller in a 1974 interview with Pacula that is included inside of the booklet here. So if you look inside, of course, you have the disc, you've got the booklet here. Inside, you've got some very interesting artwork that I'll show you here. That's pretty interesting. Of course, here's the disc. The enclosed booklet is really interesting. I like this booklet because you have, you know, these various elements and I don't, I don't want to spoil too much of this film, but these are various elements that play into the Parallax Corporation's test that they give people. So there's a series of questions and the personality inventory is listed here on the, on the back of this booklet. It's a little stapled booklet, which I love from Criterion. But here you have the essay Dark Towers from Nathan Heller, which is an excellent essay. And then you've also got an interview with Alan J. Pacula in here as well. So this is a very nice insert, of course, You've got this, this labyrinthian maze here. And of course, very nice cast. Warren Beatty's a star as Joseph Frady. Of course, the supporting cast is excellent with Hume Cronin playing Bill Rentals, William Daniels playing Austin Tucker, Paula Prentice playing Lee Carter, and Walter McGinn playing Jack Younger. And of course, you've got credits from the crew as well. So this is a very nice booklet that's included in the insert. 
So overall, this is an excellent addition that I recommend picking up from Criterion. Again, if you're interested in movies from the 1970s, movies that, that really speak to the vibe of what was going on in the consciousness in our country during that period of time, if you like movies that give you an expression of that, The Parallax View is an excellent film to pick up, as well as the other two films from Pacula's Paranoia Trilogy. Of course, Clute is an excellent addition that I highly recommend picking up. And All the President's Men as well is another great movie. This is not a Criterion, obviously. This is the Warner Brothers release from a few years back. But this does bring up a little bit of a question. We have Clute from Alan J. Pacula that came out a few years ago. We now have The Parallax View that has just recently come out in February that I picked up as part of the flash sale. Which raises the question, are we going to see a criterion for all the president's men? My guess would be probably. We don't know for sure, nothing's been announced, but we'll have to keep our fingers crossed on that one. We don't know. And this is an excellent addition from Criterion that I highly recommend picking up. How would I rank this film amongst the films that I've seen so far that I picked up in the flash sale? I would say that this film for me, while a very good film, this is a nice addition from Criterion, this film doesn't quite reach the heights of Smooth Talk for me or Amores Peros. This film is slightly below those two films, but still, this is a really nice addition from Criterion that I highly recommend picking up, especially in an upcoming sale. So that's my review of The Parallax View. Highly recommended. All right, so there you have it. Those are my thoughts on The Parallax View, directed by Alan J. Pakula from 1974, starring Warren Beatty. It's a really, really good film that I highly recommend picking up, and the addition from Criterion is excellent. So it's definitely one that you'll want to pick up, especially on an upcoming sale. The July sale is coming around before we know it. And of course, there will be a November sale probably and an upcoming flash sale from Criterion maybe later on this year. So plenty of opportunities to pick up the Parallax View as well as any other titles that may be on your list. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the Parallax View? Have you seen the Parallax View? What do you think of Warren Beatty in the Parallax View? And what is your favorite Warren Beatty character in films? Let me know that in the comments below. It could be from a Criterion Edition or any other film that Warren Beatty's played in. Let me know your favorite character that Warren Beatty has played in the comments below. Also, let me know what films are you interested in picking up in the upcoming Criterion Collection sales in July from Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and upcoming flash sales. What Criterion Collection titles are you most interested in picking up this year? And also let me know with the first quarter wrapped up, what is your favorite Criterion Collection edition of 2021 so far? What is your favorite Criterion Collection edition so far that has come out in 2021? Mine so far has been Smooth Talk from director Joyce Chopra. What is your favorite edition from Criterion so far in 2021? As always, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time at the movies. Peace.